Hi, big kids. It's Jennifer. I miss you. I'm going to read you a story. So go find somewhere cozy to go nestle into. And here we go. This story is called Dinner Guests. It's an African folktale, and it's retold by Stephanie Kalmanson. One hot, hot day, Turtle was walking home through the woods when he smelled delicious things cooking at Anansi the spider's house. Now, Turtle was tired and hungry from his long walk, so he knocked on Anansi's door. Anansi was not happy to see Turtle standing there. He was just about to eat his dinner of fish and yams, and he wanted it all for himself. But Anansi knew that he must never turn a visitor away, so he said, Greetings, Mr. Turtle. Won't you come in and share my dinner? How kind you are, Turtle said. Turtle sat down at the place Anansi had set for him and reached out for a piece of fish. Just as he was about to pop it into his mouth, Anansi spoke up. Why, Mr. Turtle, don't you know it is bad manners to come to the table with dusty paws? Please go to the stream and wash them. Turtle, tired and hungry, waddled down the hot, hot hill to the stream. He washed his paws, he washed his face, he even washed behind his ears. Then he waddled back. Anansi was eating as fast as he could, and most of the food was gone. Turtle sat down and reached for a piece of fish. Just as he was about to pop it into his mouth, Anansi spoke up. My, my, Mr. Turtle, he said, look at those paws. They must have gotten dusty again when you came up the hill. Why don't you go wash them and walk back through the grass? Turtle was hungrier than ever, but he waddled down to the stream. He washed his paws as fast as he could and went back up through the grass. When Turtle got back to the table, Anansi was just scraping the last bits of food from the plate. What a good dinner that was, Anansi said. It is a shame you missed it. Yes, it is, said Turtle, but thank you for asking me. You must come to my house for dinner sometime. All the way home, Turtle thought. Anansi says all the right things, but does all the wrong things. He is mean, mean. Now, Anansi would never miss a free dinner. So the very next week, he went stem by stem through the grass to visit Turtle. Well, well, Turtle said, how good it is to see you. I will go and make our dinner. Turtle dove down into the river with a splash. His house was all the way at the bottom. Anansi was tired and hungry. He could hardly wait for the delicious dinner Turtle was making. Finally, Turtle, Turtle came back up eating a juicy clam. Dinner is ready, he said. Then he dove back down into the river. Anansi jumped in after him, but he was so light he could only float. He flipped and he flopped and he waved his arms wildly, trying to get down to Turtle's house. But none of that worked. I know what to do, he said. He filled his pockets with small round pebbles, then jumped back into the river. Down, down, down he went and landed with a bump right at Turtle's table. What a beautiful dinner you've made, said Anansi. Thank you, said Turtle. Please help yourself. Anansi reached out for a clam. Just as he was about to pop it into his mouth, Turtle spoke up. My goodness, Anansi, he said. I see you are still wearing your jacket. Don't you know that it is bad manners to leave your jacket on at dinner? Please, take it off at once. Slowly, slowly, Anansi took off his jacket. Without the pebbles in his pocket, he was not heavy enough to stay down at the bottom. Slowly, slowly, he floated back to the top of the river. Turtle waved goodbye to Anansi. Come again soon, he said, and he popped another clam into his mouth. Well, that's the story for today, big kids. I hope you enjoyed it, and you have a nice rest time, and I will see you soon. Bye.